Hi, and in this video, we're going to have a look at what Blizzard have been saying recently at PAX. Uh, they were only at Gamescom a couple of weeks ago and released quite a lot of information uh, about what's coming up in Legion, and they've added to that. It seems to be very much part of this new stuff offensive to really get away from that WAD feel of no new content. It seems that what they want to do is to basically announce something new every week or every couple of weeks. So we can assume they're going to keep portioning out info to keep the carrot dangling for as long as possible. So the first thing was on Karazhan. Now, to my mind, there was only so much added to this really because, of course, they announced Karazhan with much fanfare for patch 7.1 at Gamescom a couple of weeks ago. Um, tell us a little bit more about it. What they're really emphasizing, the fact, is that unlike old raids that have been done as dungeons, the troll dungeon we're really thinking of, Zulgarab and Zul, uh, Zulgarub, sorry, and Zulaman, that this isn't just going to be the same assets scaled up, and, and but not too much, because we're going to do it five man. It's a dungeon, not a raid. The, the idea is that it's remodeled, and it's got completely new encounters and all the rest of it. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately this also seems to include a chess event of some kind we'll have to assume it's not going to be quite the same as before um, but I'm not particularly I was never keen on the chess event in TBC uh, in terms of sort of things that are a nice little change I thought the opera event was really good I did like the opera event because it was still a proper fight it was it had a bit of humor to it it was interesting but it was a it was still a, a, like a proper raid fight really Whereas, you know, the chess event, it, it's very much in the same mould as the vehicle fights that came in Wrath, really. It's like, mm, but maybe some people like it. Uh, I, I assume they've done, well, This it comes back to the point I keep making, if you watch uh, others of my videos, about market research. I was just about to say, I assume they've done their market research and verified that people actually enjoyed the chess event. But then I'm thinking, again... What form does this market research take? Because it's an easy enough survey to send out, an in-game survey. Certain features. Did you enjoy this feature? Did you enjoy this encounter? You know, did you like the chess event? In, or, you know, first, obviously send it to people whose accounts look like they were playing in TBC. Maybe it's, you know, targeted. Did you enjoy the chess event in Karazhan? Simple enough, isn't it? Yes or no? Um, I didn't get one. So I'm going to assume they haven't done that. So I'm not... You know, are they doing it because they think people liked it? Or are they going off maybe anecdotal evidence from the time or what? I don't know. I didn't like it. Um, so yeah, th th they are pushing this fact that it is a new thing. It's, you know, it it's up to date. It's going to have new art in there. It's going to sort of look like the old Karazhan, but re redone to also make it look new. Like they're not just trying. I think what they want to... They've got to balance a couple of things, really, I think, Blizzard. On the one hand, in order to give us lots and lots of content, obviously, there has to be a certain amount of reusing of assets. The daily, um, or, or the constantly recycled, I should say, it's not always on a daily basis, of World Quest is a classic example of this. I mean, I've just done the World Quest in Suramar, because that was the emissary quest today, and two of them were exactly the same. It was point a wand at 10 withered. But in two different places, um, and you can get the same ones day after day. But you might you might do it one day, and you might not get it for another week. So that sort of thing has to be done. So it's natural that they want to sort of get old content, especially when it was popular, and redo it. But I think what they're on the but on the other hand, the players don't want them to just redo it and scale it for five men at the new you know five men at the new level. Um, so what Blizzard are trying to do is is demonstrate that they're actually redoing it. They are putting work into it. It's not just something they've pulled out their arse one break time. Um, so I mean, they've, they've you know they've actually said they want that nostalgia in there. Uh, I mean, no kidding. They've been going for the ultra nostalgia in the past two expansions, really, but it, for it all to to feel new. In terms of actual raids because of course this is a dungeon it was a raid it isn't a dungeon it's going to be a dungeon and it's not going to replace i mean they said that before i'll just reiterate this it's not going to replace the karazhan raid that will still exist so there's obviously going to have to be a new entrance into it but there's plenty of opportunities for that there were different entrances into the old karazhan anyway so that's fine 
Um, yeah, the raid. They talked about a raid between Emerald Nightmare, which is coming out in ooh, a couple of weeks now, and Nighthold, which is coming out early next year. They've, but they didn't really say anything about we did. We it, it said it was going to finish off the Stormheim thing. So uh, you know, we all sort of assumed it's going to be a, a hellier raid. Maybe there'll be another boss there. Um, but they didn't give any details a couple of weeks ago. Now they are again in, with this, and it's exactly what I would do. It's all about this, I think, giving out a portion of information, you know, not going overboard, not spilling all the beans, a little bit, and then a couple of weeks later, more announcements, another little bit, maybe in a couple of weeks, even if there's not another convention to go to, they do their own thing because they've talked about wanting to do these developer Twitch stream things, these developer Q&As uh, on a regular basis. So, you know, they could easily portion out little bits of information uh, and as I said at the start, it's like dangling the carrot, keeping it there, keeping us mindful with new information, not just reiterating what's coming up, but actually giving us a bit of new information. So they have done that with Trial uh, trial of Valor, which is what the raid is going to be called. It's a three-boss raid. It is it is going to finish off with Hellia. Um, that came as no surprise whatsoever. It says it's going to tie up the story of Odin and Hellia. Now, Odin and Hellia do have a bit of a story in the... Warcraft Chronicles, the book that they brought out to sort of set certain law things in stone. Um, I need to brush up on it a little bit, but, but ultimately, from what I remember about it, Odin is a keeper. He's one of the keepers um, tasked by the Titans to sort of look after Azeroth. Hellier is not, but Hellier is a Titan construct. And there was a bit of a barney between the two, and Odin basically banished Hellier into Helheim. Uh, this sort of uh, place for the dead, um, Asgard type thing. Oh, it's not really Asgard, is it? Because it's not. It's more of a hellish type thing. I don't know what the Norse equivalent of that is, but um, yeah, she's not very happy about it. You can probably tell if you've already done that. You probably now, if you've leveled up and you've done the Storm High quest, you probably know Hellia is not the cheeriest of people. Um, but yes, yeah, so you're going to fight Odin first of all, a bit like you did in the dungeon. You're not obviously going to kill him. He's not angry at you he just wants to test you again to see if you're worthy um then the second boss will be guam which is that big doggy that you had to sneak past smelling of seaweed and then finally hell yeah now what is the purpose of this raid because we're going to be an emerald nightmare probably this seems like a little bitty raid what's it for well what they've said is that it's going to have some really good trinkets in there so the reason people are going to go there they're not thinking of it as a whole new like big raid or anything like that Emerald Nightmare because you're gearing up for Nighthold your focus is going to be on that because that'll be coming out imminently what this is for is you know the the motivation to go there will be trinkets <clears throat> we all know raiders go mad for trinkets uh, just as with Nighthold we're going to be looking for tier sets uh, and I get questions all the time about oh, which trinkets best which and I, I struggle myself it's not not necessarily easy to know um, and it's very difficult because as soon as someone comes up with a list of saying well this trinket's better for you Blizzard change it anyway. Trinkets are like the number one thing that gets changed right before um, a new raid comes out as well. But um, but yeah, we we all go mad for trinkets. We know what a difference it can make. The difference between a really good trinket and and, and a really bad trinket for our spec. Um, so that's where we're going to go to get good trinkets. Now, in terms of other news, there was something really new, um, which will be very welcome for me. It would have been more welcome for me if they could have got this out for Legion. I'm assuming they didn't deliberately leave it until like the second week of Legion launch. I'm just guessing it wasn't ready. Fair enough. But of course, you may well have heard of the World of Warcraft companion app for your order hall. Now, what this will allow you to do, we've sort of had, uh, we've got World of Warcraft apps already on our phone. We can sort of muck about... Um, but, but what we'll be able to do here is send missions off, finish missions that have completed and send them off. Really good for your order hall campaign if you've got one of those, like I'm on at the moment with some Lumenstone, but whatever it is for your particular spec and class, I should say. Um, if you've got a mission, and, and you know it's going to take several days because you've got to gather so many of these things. Well, you could be in my position where it's sort of going to finish while you're at work. Um, so you wait a few hours to come back home, put another one on, and that's... You know, you might be able to save over the course of the whole thing, maybe a day, if you, as soon as it's finished, you can tippy-tappy and complete the mission and send a new one out. You'll also be able to do the same with your upgrades, which will be really good, because remember, 
we need to keep those rolling in order to get the to be able to equip the second legendary. Not that I've even got one legendary yet, but of course, you know, it's it's been a week, never mind. Um, but yeah, if if you get two legendaries uh, and you complete your order hall upgrade, you'll be able to wear two legendaries. And wouldn't it be good if you, you know, as soon as it's finished, no matter where you are, uh, I mean, don't wake up for it, that's just sad. Um, but, you know, if you're at work or you're out shopping or something like that, you can just... Not in the cinema, don't get your phone out of the cinema, that's just rude. In most places, when it's finished, uh, you can just complete it and send the next one off. So that sounds like a really good idea. It's sort of coming out today. I haven't got it yet. I don't know, like... It's sort of America waking up time at the moment as I'm doing this, so I'm, it's, I'm guessing it's not out yet. I'll have a little look at it probably tomorrow. I'm not in that much of a rush now because it's sort of past the point where it'd be really useful for me, should we put it that way? But I still think it's a, it's a really good idea, um, and, and especially for the future. And if if we have these sort of things in a future expansion or in the next expansion, um, it'd be really good if we could get it out for the start of expansion. I think for the mo majority of us, that's when it's most useful. Of course, it will be useful for other characters as well for our outs. And stuff like that. Uh, they also did some sort of general stuff, uh, not on any particular topics. Um, they've talked about the fact that with artifacts, you know, I mean, it, it, it's bizarre. some people are still talking about, you know, are we still going to have artifacts in the next expansion? They've already basically said no, um, because they'd already been discussed. I mean, they muddied the waters a little bit because there was at one time when they were saying we're not sure. But, you know, then they've started talking about, okay, because uh, people were concerned if we're not going to have artifacts, which we're not in the next expansion, well, what about the really cool skins? Do we still get those? Well, the answer is yes. They're going to work on allowing us to use them for the purposes of transmog. So another thing they've talked about are the traits. They've said that the idea is the artifacts. Obviously, they give us certain traits. And, and, and in most specs case, a new ability and they said, well, there's no reason why that can't just be baked into the class with a new expansion. So when we leave our artifacts behind, we just naturally have that ability as part of our class. I suppose a little bit like what they did in WAD. In WAD, um, they got rid of it as Legion was coming. But what they did with WAD is every couple of levels, you've got a new ability. But most of those abilities were sort of based on like set bonuses and stuff like that that we had in, in, in uh, MOP. Uh, Miss Pandaria. It could be a, a similar sort of thing, you know, maybe it's not completely baked into the character, you, you do this thing again, where it's every couple of levels to let you feel like you're getting something, because I think, although the, I think Blizzard like the idea that as you level up, you get things for your character, because it used to be talents, in the old talent system, you got a point for every a, a talent point for every level, from level, level 10 you got your first talent point, and you got a new one every level so every level there was always something that was, you know, modifying your character. Um, and then the new talent system came in, so that didn't really work. So I think with Wad they did this every two level thing. Now, of course, we have our artifact. I mean, you'll be you'll be putting points in your artifact as you level up even. So what we're going to have in the next expansion without an artifact, um, you know, they might go back to the Wad idea. They might come up with a completely new idea, uh, again, based on, you know, these traits that we have now. Uh, they have talked. They talked about phasing. Uh, the idea, obviously, phasing allows you to do a lot of really great things. They they really went to town on it in in Wrath of the Lich King and have sort of developed it since then. Uh, and of course, the idea is that you can have a zone completely change uh, just for your character, depending on where you are in the story. But as they've said, you know, they noted here, they have to be a little bit careful that you're not making it a single player experience. And and I, this is my main issue with phasing things, that you have a situation where you've got some grouping up with someone and one person hasn't done the quest and one hasn't, and it's it's a different zone and you can't really uh, group together. Now, I would always suggest in a situation like that that the land automatically goes into the phase of the leader of the party if you're going to group together. Uh, that would make sense to me because that way you can determine uh, where you are. Um, they don't really do that as far as I know. I'm pretty sure they don't or even thinking about it. But that to me would make more sense. Um, but yeah, they've, they've emphasized here the, the, the actual people out in the world and, and not this feeling that you're ever alone. And I think that's what the world quests are about. Now the world quests, of course, is double-edged sword, especially for me on a PvP server because um, 
I'm not on a PvP server by choice because people always say when I moan about it, well, why are you on a PvP? There are PvE servers, you know. So, yes, there are PvE servers which don't have raid guilds on them. Excellent. Uh, for some reason, raid guilds are just on PvP servers. And, you know, there are some on PvE servers, very, very few. So you basically have no choice. But while I've been levelling up my first two characters, I've got two characters at level 110 now, I haven't had very much trouble with people ganking me. I've had like two instances of it. It's not the worst thing in the world. Uh, it's annoying, though. Uh, because I, especially as I'm being really considerate, like obviously there's a lot of situations where you're on world quest or even just levelling, um, you know, shared unique mobs, where someone from the opposite faction is attacking at you going, everything I do cleaves, for goodness sake. And you're thinking, well, I'm damaging them. It's a bit rude. So what I usually do is just try and stick to single target abilities, uh, which means, okay, I'm lowering my DPS, but they're DPS in it as well. And, you know, it's all sort of fine. Uh, of course, some people don't do that. That's just me. With the world quests, that's going to happen more often. I mean, when I leveled up in WAD, which I also did on a PvP server for the first expansion, I did notice every now and then I got ganked on my alts. Usually what I did, because I've got two accounts. Most of my alts, not all of them, are on my other account. So I can just f keep them online, fly over with my main, beat them up, unless it's a blood death night, in which case, boo-hoo. Go on to another character, really. Um, and then act as a guardian agent, angel over them while I carry on leveling. But you, it happened very, very infrequently because people deliberately had to go out in the world specifically to do that you know these these you know people who've been uh, obviously getting very badly bullied in their own life and it makes them feel big but it's going to happen more often because of course world quest means that we're in every zone every day uh, not necessarily literally every zone we might not do all of them but you know the the good side of this scaling idea is that it means that all the zones remain relevant the bad side is when you're leveling your outs on a pvp server you're going to get beaten up a lot um and it's not even like even if dungeons gave good experience you'd want to level up in dungeons in the same way you do in the earlier levels because you are missing out on stuff you don't want to be missing out on it's uh yeah i'm not looking forward to that at all um but they have said to expect zone scaling technology to be expanded it's going to be going on there um they they're using different shards of course which are different copies of zones to make sure that there aren't too many people in any one zone this sort of prevents you know servers crashing and things like this um i think the only pr time anyone sort of said in my guild that there's been really bad problems have been in the underbelly i think generally out in the world even at launch it was actually pretty good the only problems we've had with server pr you know issues login issues have been caused by I, I i'm assuming ddos attacks because they happened after launch for a start and were quite infrequent again they also talked about scaling um where they should use it and when i've i've said before where i would use scaling is i would have all zones scale but in a very particular way what you want it when you level up now in the old zones especially with aliens but even if you're a brand new player because to be honest people with aliens just level up in dungeons let's be honest but if you're a brand new player and you're going out questing, even without heirlooms, you you your quests are going green before you finish the, the thing. And it's like you've been encouraged to go to a different zone. It's like, well, if you're enjoying the story, why would you do that? So if you had them scale, that would never be an issue. You can do the zones however much you like. And also, you don't have to think to yourself. Like I used to think to myself, when I used to level back in vanilla and TBC as Alliance, and I used to, doesn't matter what race, I'd do the starting area, no matter what race I was. Then I'd go to Westfall, because I really liked Westfall. After Westfall, generally, I sort of could go to Duskwood. I loved Duskwood. It was one of my favourite zones. But I could do with a few extra levels just to make it a bit more comfortable. So what I used to do was to go to Red Ridge Mountains, kill a few Murlocs for a bit. But I didn't like Red Ridge Mountains. I didn't like a single quest in Red Ridge Mountains. But I only did it for a couple of levels. I thought it was all right. But, you know, this way I could just go where I want. You can just explore. If you want to not do any quests and you just want to explore the land, you can go and do that because you're not going to do what I had to do in the old days. And to get to another zone, go through areas with things 20 level. I don't even know what, how, many, how high they were really, except I've done it on my first character because they had a skull where their level should be, these mobs. Um, that wouldn't happen. You can just freely explore. So I'd absolutely put it into the all the zones. This, this scaling 
However, what you don't want to happen is when the new expansion comes out, people just go and level and do quests that they haven't done in the older ones because there's not going to be as many people there because obviously they they drive the story in the leveling experience as well. They don't start telling the story of the new expansion when you've hit level cap. They're doing it right from the start. So they want you to level in the new zones. So it's this simple. At the moment, let's say at the moment, this is how I would have it if this technology had been brought in for Legion. I would allow you to level up to 100 in any zone you like, from Elwyn Forest all the way up to like Nagrand in on the actual Drenor. Wherever you like. But at that point, it stops scaling. So in other words, older zones only scale up to the previous level cap. That way, if you want to get any further levels, um, you're not getting much experience from carrying on in those zones. You might as well go to the new zones. That's how I would do it. And I think that would work pretty well. But you know, that is my opinion. Uh, they refuse to be drawn on whether we've seen the last of Vol'jin yet. Well, we'll set fire to him. Now, I know that trolls in World of Warcraft don't have to behave like trolls in, say, Dungeons & Dragons or something like that. But usually setting fires to trolls is pretty much curtains. Um... I suppose they could be implying he could come back as some sort of spirit. Trolls do that quite a lot, don't they? Um, so, yeah, maybe maybe they're thinking of a quest line in the future where the spirit of Vol'jin guides you through something or other. Um, but again, not commenting on it doesn't mean to say they've got plans for that. It just means they're not ruling anything out. That's You know, you, you take that as it read. Don't read between the lines on that one. Uh, then they sort of finished off by talking about how Legion's going so far. Of course, it's only been out for a week. Uh, and they've said that, you know, the reviews and so on have been really positive, which, you know, they have been. They generally would be at the start of an expansion, of course. That being said, I think there is cause for optimism. Um, I mean, I've said before, for me personally, it's an absolute nightmare. It's not in, the start of an expansion is never enjoyable. And when there's more to do, even less so, because that means there's more that I have to do. But, um, but. In terms of you know what they've brought to the game, it is it is really good. Uh, I'm not saying I agree with all of their sort of design philosophies, but it's certainly a massive step up on Wall of Adrenal. Is it better than Mr. Pandaria? Now, for me, and of course it's subjective. I like, the, I prefer the system of world quests to the god awful daily rep quest that we had to do in Mr. Pandaria. That being said, there is an equivalent with the Nightfall and Rep. I am well behind on it because, again, I do not like that sort of thing. I'm doing sort of what I can. I am certainly not. I am going to be way behind on unlocking the two Suramar dungeons, Arkway and Court of Stars, which are not even dungeons I enjoyed when I tried them out in the beta anyway, Alpha and Beta. It's, um, but I sort of know I'm going to have to unlock them. So I'm going to have to put some effort into that probably this weekend or this week when I can. Um, at the moment, I mean, in terms of... But in terms of the sort of general thing, it's varied enough that I think it's okay. And it's not like you're having to ram everything. Like, you might sort of imagine, well, for gear, you need to keep ramming dungeons. It's useful to still do dungeons because, of course, especially for things like trinkets, if there's a really good trinket, there is a chance with trinkets that it could be Titan Force right up to 850. Uh, very unlikely, but there's, the possibility always exists. But of course, it's it's also readily, gear is readily available on the auction house. I bought a few BOE pieces off the auction house, reasonable price. I'm not going mad yet, because there is always the possibility, I don't really need to have massive item level until the raid opens up in a couple of, still two weeks to go for that. And by that time, of course, the price may come down. It may not, I don't know. Um, but yesterday I got a crafted belt because the the advantage of doing this is you can obviously craft these random stats on it. So you just look down the list till you find the stats that are good for you. And if they're not good for a lot of other people, all to the better because it's probably going to be cheaper. Um, so I found some that were good for me and then just bought seven obliterum to get it right up to 850, which on my server is not that expensive for, for you know, as far as. So, I mean, I got the whole, the whole thing only cost me about 65,000 gold. Which, for an 850 piece, I think, phew, yeah. Because, I mean, I only saved up about 2 million, a little under 2 million, if truth be told, gold for the expansion. But I'm quite happy to spend almost, as long as I've got enough for consumables, because it's not, I usually service myself with consumables because I have an alchemist. 
Usually the second character I level is a herbalist and a miner. I pass the herbs to them. They they make the potions because they can do that without leveling. Jobs are good. Not so easy with the way professions work now and needing to do quests and things. So I may well have to buy my potions and flasks and stuff off the auction house um, to begin with. Although I'm not sure where we are with cauldrons. Might get me out of it. Maybe the guild will do those. But still, I'm going to have to buy the consumables that I need to provide myself myself so i need enough gold for that while i get my trade outs into gear um but the rest of it as far as i'm concerned could just be on gold i'm not bothered about the spider mount if i end up with like two million gold at some point and nothing to do with it yeah sure but ultimately all i do in an expansion i don't go mad this is why i don't really save up a lot of gold because i'm not bothered about it i only need it at the start of an expansion and um and i'm quite happy to just you know blow it all pretty much on, on getting BOEs um, and there's so much scope for it because there's none of this stuff in Wad where you can only have three pieces of crafted gear whatever you want knock yourself out son um, <laughs> so gear is not of an issue the main issue is really artifact power and making sure that's there's enough of that they did s <laughs> they said that coming up with artifacts that weren't previously well known was one of the most fun things weren't previously well known they've had two that are well known none of the rest of them are well known they're just sort of they made all of them up. Um, at the moment, it seems to be justified. I was a little concerned that there was a bit of a cataclysm issue arising here. One issue I would... And I wasn't there for the start of class Cataclysm, but it's plain to see. They spent a lot of development resources, you know, people and time, on redoing the level 1 to 60 content, which I actually liked, but okay, a lot of people didn't find. I mean, the minority there. But they nonetheless spent a lot of time on that, which most people didn't see because even if they're leveled out, they would just do it in dungeons anyway because that's when the looking for dungeon tool really um, was refined. And of course, then we didn't have as much content as we should have done in Cataclysm itself. And you sort of wonder, well, if you'd have spent that time on endgame content, would people have had a better view of Cataclysm? And I was a bit worried about that with the... Um, not so much the class campaigns, because there's only 12 of those. But you've got 36 scenarios really forgetting the artifact in the first place, even though some of them share assets. You know, it's not 36 completely unique ones. <clears throat> Nonetheless, it's developer time and, and, and resources into doing that. And I did wonder, is that going to take away from the content that people actually want? Um, so far, it seems no. It does seem that they actually have... They're showing now the fruits of supposedly having a large development team, I think, anyway. That's just my view. But again, I always have to sort of check myself, even though I've seen what, you know, a lot of what's coming, and I'm thinking, well, this is looking pretty good. We always have to remember things will always look best at the start of an expansion. So we really need to revisit this in, say, a year's time and then see. Um, they did say this thing. This, this is a comment, again, it sort of triggers me a little bit. Uh, where they've said that <clears throat> people have been asking for class content over the years. Now, I would agree with that, but here's, you know, I'm going to check that in a moment. Um, so what they've said is they're, they're saying that Legion really delivers on that, you know, and that's what it's all about, this class content. Here's the right way how I would check it. It seems a bit, um, it's like, again, I come back to what I said earlier. How do they know? How do they know people have been asking for this? Because here's the thing. Your immediate answer might be, well, they read forums, people post on forums that they want all this, and, you know, they read tweets, people say in tweets they want this whole thing. Yes, yeah, sure, great, absolutely. The problem is, whenever someone says to Blizzard, ah, oh, yeah, but people on forums are asking for this, and people on Twitter are asking for this, they come back with, ah, oh, yeah, but those people only represent a few percent of our player base. So it's like one thing or another Blizzard, you know, um, what's good for the goose is good for the gander you can't on the one hand say that people have been asking for this thing just based on what they've been saying on forums if we can't do the same thing and how else are they doing it there's no sneaky way they're finding out because i haven't been asked again it comes back to surveys they don't send surveys out asking for these sort of things i ain't had one in like years and you're over a decade uh of of of, of having world of warcraft accounts um but at the same time, I'm not disagreeing with it because I think people do like that. Absolutely. I think people like class-specific content. I think the only thing that, that I think people 
have complained about with the campaign and it's always the way and it's ultimately Raiders so it's not the majority of the player base by any means is the fact that you have this compulsion to do it quickly uh, and anything that you do rushed is not as enjoyable but again that's a, a small percentage of the total player base um, overall I think you know it's a good thing because whatever content they put in the game Raiders have to do it and have to do it quickly anyway because they don't give very long before the Raiders themselves come out. I mean, they do at least have a lead in. It used to be the case that the Raiders would open as soon as the expansion did. I mean, that nightmare. Um, and that's pretty much it. And then that's sort of also sort of my comments on that as well. So quite a lot to take in there, but I didn't think it was worth breaking up in the same as the other ones because a lot of them are sort of, there's only actually a couple of completely different topics in there to my mind. Uh, so let me know what you think about that. And I hope you found it interesting, as always. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time, I'll see you later.